welcome to the signal path. Today's episode is a product review. I'm going to review a pair of Regal programmable power supplies. Regal is the manufacturer behind a very popular entry-level oscilloscope that now everybody owns. Regal used to manufacture equipment for Agilent and then Agilent would rebrand them and sell them as Agilent equipment so you can expect some pretty good quality products coming from them. Now they're on their own producing a, a, a range of uh, products for laboratory use and I have their 2010 catalog, they have oscilloscopes, spectrum analyzers, multimeters and of course the programmable power supplies. So these two programmable power supplies that they have on their uh, catalog are the ones I have here in my lab and I'm going to be reviewing them. So we'll look at um, the build quality, the ease of use, we'll look at the features it has and we'll, then we'll do some tests on them to characterize them, have an idea of how, how well they perform. At the same time this characterization should help uh, those of you who build their, your own power supplies or purchase something that you like to characterize then we can do some similar tests. So at the same time we will learn something about how we can test these type of devices or this type of uh, equipment. So I'm, uh, I've had this for a while now, I've been using them for um, a wide range of um, experiments, been very happy with them. So now we're going to compare them at the same time with the Agilent um, power supply, benchtop power supply that is essentially the um, uh, standard, industry standard. So uh, it's uh, Regal is trying to compete with that particular power supply and try to replace it. So uh, let's see uh, the compare the features and see how they perform against each other. So we'll uh, put all this together and hopefully you'll find this, uh, this film a, a useful uh, tutorial as well. Okay, I've taken the power supplies out of the lab and I've put them on a separate table so we can easily compare them. I have put the Regal power supplies on top of each other and I have on the right side an Agilent power supply so that we can compare them visually and in terms of features. So to start from the top here, this is the Regal DP1116A power supply. It is a single output supply with sense ports directly in the front and it can give you up to 160 watts of power. Uh, so that means uh, anywhere from 0 to 16 volts, it can give you up to 10 amps and anywhere, for, anywhere from 16 to 32 volts, it can give you up to 5 amps. Uh, and also, of course, uh, because this is such a high power, um, high power wattage supply, it has sense ports in the front to compensate for the drop on the cable. So we will test that during the testing. Uh, at the bottom, I have the Regal DP1308 supply. It's a triple output supply. Uh, it has a 6 volt up to 5 amps and a plus and minus 25 volt up to 1 amp. The 6 volt and the plus and minus 25 volt are completely electrically isolated. This is critical if you're using a supply like this in a mixed mode application. For example, you can use the 6 volt supply to power an, the digital portion of your circuit and the plus and minus 25 volt to power an analog portion of your of your circuit and this way the noise from one does not in get injected into the other power supply so very important for laboratory usage and for uh, industrial testing. Uh, this top power supply is specifically designed for high power applications because it has much more output power this guy can give you 160 watts while this guy can give you 80 watts so uh, if you have an electromechanical system and or if you need a lot of power delivered to any type of system this would be your desired power supply I'm also comparing it here to an Agilent uh, E3648A power supply which can give you um, 5 amps up to 8 volts and 2.5 amps up to 20 volts. So this is also a very good power supply and the industry standard. So we can now compare in terms of feature and performance and we'll do some tests. So let's look at these power supplies visually and see what uh, the interfaces look like. So both of the Regal power supplies obviously have very similar interface but you can see right away that they're equipped with a, um, an LCD color display on both of them which has a 480 by 272 um, pixels of resolution and it uh, supports true color. Because of this interface, this is a huge benefit. Uh, first of all, ease of uh, readability, you can read there's a big, big fonts will display on these and as well as the fact that you can have different colors you can have very sophisticated software running on these power supplies to do some complex testing easily uh, without the use of a computer or without the use of any other, in, other device connected to these power supplies. So the use of the power supplies, uh, LCD and a power supply, a huge benefit. I, I found that uh, I, I'm now exclusively using these guys simply because the interface is so great. So you have uh, soft buttons in the front which are uh, depends of course on what's displayed on the LCD screen, the same for both of them. Uh, for the DP1116A, we have a 16 volt 10 amp button selection, a 30, 32 volt 5 amp button selection, 
and an output on and off soft key. The keys uh, feel good. Yeah, they're, uh, you can clearly feel when the button is being pressed. High quality soft silicone feel to all the buttons. A full keypad in the front. Another huge benefit than this knob for the Agilent where you have to continuously rotate to get the voltage you want. Imagine if you had to get to 32 volts and this is going to take a whole bunch of rotations and a few pushes of these buttons before you can get to the voltage you want. This guy, you just type in exactly what you want, press OK and enter and it's done. Uh, they have, they have a directional switch at the top with volts written at the top, milliamps at the bottom, millivolts milli at the bottom, milliamps on the left and amps on the right. So you can enter a number and press the, the unit that you want. You don't need to necessarily select voltage or ampere. Uh, it makes it much easier to enter data into the power supply. And uh, we have an earth ground, the green one, and we have a plus and minus sense port on the outside and plus and minus outputs here. And of course we have a USB interface in the front. Another huge benefit if you need to give this guy a spreadsheet of voltages that you'd like it to go through. Another big important advantage when you're doing uh, industrial testing or reliability or repeatability or you're trying to find performance versus power supply or you're trying to find out how your circuit behaves for various type of glitches. Huge advantage having um, a USB where you can get data into the power supply and get data out of the power supply. So in terms of interface, the DP1308A is very similar to the, to the one at the top. Same LCD screen, same soft button, same USB port. It also has a keypad, all the, all the usual stuff. And it has an all on, all off button, so you can turn all the outputs on and off at the same time. It can be important to do that if your uh, system, for example, requires all the power supplies to power on at the same time. This can happen, and if you're individually turning them on, you may cause a conflict of voltage amps on your, on your board. It could cause some trouble, so by turning them all on at the same time, uh, they, they would uh, maybe avoid that type of situation. But you can also individually turn them on and off if you like and you can select uh, which of the outputs you're trying to adjust. They have individual buttons on top of them. Another advantage of this guy is that you can couple the plus and minus 25 volts together. So by entering something on one of them, it will then the other one would follow. So if you have a dual supply, that would be of course necessary. Now both of them also have a few buttons at the top and a few buttons on the side here, which has a wave display, a store and a recall settings, a timer, a utility, the sense button on this one, and a help button, and on the bottom here, the track button is replaced with the sense. It makes sense because the tracking function is similar to a sense function in a, in a, in a sense that you're following a, a specific voltage with another. So we will test all of those things so you can see, but the interface design and these power supplies is, is phenomenal. I've um, had no problem, very intuitive the way the buttons are placed, very intuitive with these soft keys uh, that are here. And uh, there's also another uh, little button here that shows you a little dial, so I'll, show, I'll view that, and there is a zoom function here, a focus function, where you can bring one of these power supply settings to be largely displayed on the, on the LCD screen. Uh, they both have a soft button to turn them on and off, and they have a hard button at the back, which I will show. Now if you look at and compare that a little bit with the Agilent, the Agilent has a, a, a VFD in the front, the vacuum fluorescent display. They're very bright, so they're great uh, to see, they're high contrast, very, very high contrast, uh, but it only shows numbers uh, in the front, and, and text can be scrolled, but really is only one line of either uh, numbers or text. So entering values in here without it being connected to the computer can be pretty challenging. It does have the output selection, channel 1 and 2. It can track, of course. Uh, you can also select either the low or the high, which is the 8 volt or the 20 volt. It has over voltage prote uh, protection. You can set all the important things you would expect from a quality power supply from Agilent to be able to be used for laboratory and industrial um, uh, applications. But of course, no matter what you do, you cannot um, compete in terms of uh, ease of interface when you have a large LCD screen on one side where you can enter numbers and quickly change the things that you want. So in terms of um, uh, interface, by far the Regal Power Supply has uh, taken it to the next level. So I expect that uh, all the newer Agilent supplies, perhaps in the future, to probably take the same approach uh, because it's just so much easier to, this, to use this uh, power supplies. So I'm going to flip one of these guys back so you can see uh, what kind of interface is available from behind the power supply. So I'm going to flip both of them and then you can also see what is available from the Agilent power supply. 
So I have flipped over the power supply so you can see what's at the back. At the top right we have a selector which selects the line voltage going into the power supply. So right now it's set to 115 volts for North America, but it also has 100, 220 and 230 volts available. So this is a, an international model, you can connect it to uh, the AC outlet anywhere in the world by adjusting and selecting the appropriate um, uh, switch here. At the same time we have a hard on and off switch which directly cuts the line from the supply. If it's on the one position, and the supply is in standby mode and there's a soft key in the front, this guy right here, which will then turn it on and off. Of course, if you leave it in a zero position, there will be absolutely no current going into the supply while it's off also. In the middle, of course, is a fan uh, for cooling and we have a GPIB interface. So if you have any legacy equipment, you can use a GPIB interface to communicate with this power supply. Since most of my equipment in my lab are generally old enough, they all have GPIB interface on them so you can daisy chain them and then talk to each of them individually but at the same time there's also a USB device port here so then the, the USB that's in the front is a USB host so you can connect the USB key to this but this is a USB device so if you connect this to your computer it will recognize this as a power supply with the, with the proper drivers that you can download from the Regal website and then you can send commands to this and do a whole array of very complex uh, tasks using this power supply and believe it or not it also has an ethernet port with a built-in uh, web server in it which then has a website that you type the IP address of this guy you go in and it has its own configuration accessible through any browser you can change the settings and so on directly from the browser or of course this is an LXI class C interface which is a standard for communicating with instruments of this type then you can easily uh, connect them all together on a hub and then ch change them and configure them. So it's pretty amazing that a, a power supply like this has not only the, the, the interface in the front and the ease of use in the front, but it also has a, a really wide range of ways to communicate with it. So very versatile piece of equipment. Now we can compare that a little bit to the Agilent power supply. Gadget and power supply, um, you have to purchase a different one, of course, for where you are in the world. And this one is equipped with um, a serial port. This is a particular, it's an older model that I have. It has a serial port in the back, and it also has a GPIB interface in the back, which are both standard. So all of these interfaces that you see on this are also all standard. You don't have to buy any option to get any of this. This is how the power supply is shipped. And the, the one nice thing that the Agile supply has is that it has the outputs available at the back but the sense ports are also available in the back so you can see that here the sense port is directly tied together with the output so this way uh, basically the the sense is essentially deactivated but you can connect them the, the uh, both outputs are available at the back so if you put this in a rack for example uh, where you need to connect it to a, an equipment then you can take the outputs directly from the back you don't have to use the front ones uh, but uh, in terms of uh, interfaces, Regal hands down has the, uh, the widest range of capabilities. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two guys, uh, put them on the desk and then uh, put them back to where they were and then we will connect them to uh, various loads and connect them to the oscilloscope so we can see the rise and fall time and the noise and so on so we can characterize them a little bit uh, and then and from now on I'm going to mostly focus on these guys so we can see how they perform. Now if I look at also the spec sheet I, we can, I can tell you a little bit about the specifications so you can know what to expect. So I've already said that this is at 160 watts and this guy is at 80 watts it has a triple output but in terms of noise they are spec to have less than 350 microvolts RMS on noise for both of these guys and for the lower power one less than 2 millivolt peak to peak of noise and for this high power one less than 3 millivolts peak to peak noise so that's very good and very low basically suitable for research or sensitive industrial applications and they have very good line regulation meaning that they can reproduce the voltages that you want very accurately better than 0.0% .0 plus 2 millivolts on both of them or better than 5 milli percent and 10 milli percent for the, um, the low the high power and the low power one respectively so very very good uh, performance from both of these power supplies uh, easily compete with the Agilent power supply in terms of spec so let's uh, let's take them up and connect them on and see uh, see what kind of uh, other things we can figure out